Hello everyone and welcome back to Zelda Retrospectives. We're coming to the end of this series, sadly, and um, today we're going to be looking at my personal favorite game in the series, uh, Skyward Sword. Now, uh, last time I told you the story of how I went to the store to go buy this game, and um, I didn't get it because I didn't have enough money. Now, um, I've had the game since like 2012, I believe. I got it for my birthday. And, uh, you know, I've been loving it since. It's a good game. It's just got, uh, numerous issues with it. So, uh, yeah. Um, it's probably going to be a running gag where, um, at some points Link will start running on his own. And, um, that's because my Wii Motion Plus, uh, controllers, both of them are really old. So, uh, bear with me. And, uh, sometimes I might have to recalibrate. And, um, that's basically the joke with this game. Um, because of the combat system and how um, it's basically just a Wii gimmick um, with the remote and nunchuck um, taking full advantage of the uh, Wii Motion Plus feature and the motion controls, this game becomes very, uh, very gimmicky and a um, little bit annoying to play at points. Not to mention that it's very, uh, it's very... It's very long. This is a very long game. You have to have a lot of patience to uh, play a Zelda game because they're very long games. But um, yeah, so I'm going to try and not make this one as long as Twilight Princess because, you know, even though this one's my favorite, I don't really have as much to say because I haven't played like two different versions of the game. But um, the first thing I want to get off my chest is how hard it was for me to play this game and it still is now you can't see me right now but I'm using I'm completely backwards right now I am playing the game with the Wii remote in my left hand and the nunchuck in my right hand and if you look at Link he uses the sword with his right hand and his shield with his left hand do you see the issue we have here and um, it's not an it's not an option for Link to be left or right handed and, uh, you know, it perplexes me why they made him uh, right-handed in Breath of the Wild whenever it doesn't really matter. And, you know, he could just easily be left-handed, but, you know, I don't really care. Because, you know, either way. But in this game, it does make you wonder why it's not an option. Now, in Twilight Princess for the Wii, it did the same thing. They had the whole uh, woggle controls. They're like, you just shake the Wii remote and nunchuck around to do certain things. And, you know, in that game, it wasn't as bad, despite how awful the shield attack is. By the way, in this game, so much better. Even though, you know, I'm still doing it with the wrong hand. So, uh, yeah, this game is just, like, gimmicky up the ass, and I don't like that. Um, they also made some various changes. For starters, um, as you can see, the Hylian Shield, which is the shield that I have right now, has a gauge that is overly long. In this game, they added in the, um, the ability for your shields to um, diminish by a gauge, meaning that you had to um, upgrade them or buy a new shield if it broke. And uh, so, like, basically like Breath of the Wild's doing. So, really when you think about it, Breath of the Wild doesn't have much original. It's just taking things that were used in other Zelda games and expanding on them. Which is good. That's what a sequel should do. That's what any, um, like, later game in a series should do. So, yeah. Oh, and, um, the swimming controls are also motion controlled. Everything in this game is motion controls, okay? Literally everything. And it's so annoying at times. But, you know, despite, the, despite that flaw, I still like this game. I still will recommend this game. Um, this game is the first Zelda game to have a fully uh, orchestrated soundtrack. Which um, makes the tracks just sound so beautiful. And, um, what else do we have in this game that's new? We have those, that's new. Um, pretty much uh, one thing that's new. A lot of the items are new. Um, 
much like in the Wii version of Twilight Princess, you have to use the Wii remote to control all of these. So like throwing items and like bombs, you have to use the Wii remote for that. And uh, let's see what else. For aiming, yeah, you have to use the Wii remote for that. For the bug net. Can I just say how much this sucks? Trying to catch bugs. That That's annoying. Having to use a Wii remote to do it is what made it annoying. Yeah, I really don't care. Oh god. Okay. So now that that's done, I will say that this is one of the only Zelda games where I have yet to max out my wallet. And one of the reasons for that is because um, I haven't really played it much recently because it's a bit of a hassle trying to um, put in a Wii game compared to putting in a Wii U game because, um, because, um, you know, I have to start at the Wii menu and all that stuff. It, it just gets really tedious at times. But anyways, yeah, I love this game. For starters, the game really looks really, um, beautiful in terms of, like, the, uh, looks because everything looks like it was, like, a painting, which is really, I like that style. It's kind of like a mixture of uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess in some ways. It's just not cell shaded. But yeah, I have not maxed out the wallet like I have in basically every other Zelda game that I have. Except maybe A Link to the Past. I haven't done it in that game either, sadly. But, um, you know, that's the game I'm going to be using for my final video, which I'll be recording next. But, um, this game did a lot of new things. However, um, one of the issues that um, people find with it is that um, that um, it doesn't really go full force with it because it still ends up being a very linear, uh, more traditional Zelda game. So it ends up being like a hybrid and it ends up um, coming off a bit confused as to whether it wants to be a, um, a traditional Zelda game or something all its own. So, yeah, that's always been a bit of an issue, um, but for what it's worth, the combat is probably some of the best that we've had in a Zelda game yet, because it's very intuitive, because you get uh, full control of the sword, you can swing it around in eight directions, and uh, the shield, the shield is amazing. If you um, perfectly shield bash something, then the shield doesn't take any damage. Speaking of damaging the shield, I hate that bar for the Hylian shield because it's completely pointless. Um, the Hylian shield does not take damage no matter what. So what's the point of the bar? I guess that like some people have told me in the past like, oh well it's to show that um, that it won't like diminish but then like then why have it there? Like you might as well just say, oh, well, it won't diminish. It doesn't have a bar. So, like, again, what's the point of it being there? One thing that's also nice um, that this game did that I don't think any other Zelda game does is that you can always just take off the shield. So just, like, Link without a shield. Which is something that you don't really see very often. Because, um, once you get a shield and equip it, then you don't take it off. So, um, I don't really know what else there is for me to say in this video. Um, I guess I'll talk about some things that bothered me and why this is my favorite one. But, um, you know, I'm coming up a bit short on time, so I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to show some of the shields that you can get in this game. Because this game actually does have some strategy to it. Um, oh dear god. Save us. This is supposed to be like this game's Miyamoto in some ways. Because he kind of looks like the happy mask salesman from the N64 games. I mean a little bit. So some people have theorized that he's an ancestor. 
Sorry for that random cut, but um, I was coming up on time and I had nothing else to say. So um, here we have the different shields here. Let me see if I can. There we go. Okay. We have the wooden shield. It's just a basic shield and uh, you can upgrade it twice. We have the iron shield, which you can also upgrade twice. And we have the uh, sacred shield, which you can upgrade twice. Now, um, one thing that's nice is that once you have upgraded these fully, you can always just sell them if you don't need them. Um, what's nice about um, this game is that, um, you know, of the four shields that are available, well, technically, counting all the upgrades, that's, if my math is correct, that's like 10. 10 shields that are available. Um, the Hylian shield is completely optional. I just get it because, you know, I think that Link looks best with his Master Sword and Hylian shield. I mean, this thing could kind of look like a Hylian shield, but it's not because I have it right now. And there's only one Hylian shield in the game. Unlike some games where there's uh, multiple. Then we have the uh, wooden shield. That's the first shield that you're going to buy. And um, basically, um, you'll need it for the first area because it's the only shield that's available at the time. And then you're going to need the iron shield for the next area because if you don't have that then you can't really protect yourself from fire because this one's going to burn. So, you know, it's very strategic in my eyes. And then for the next area it has a bunch of lightning so you're going to need the wooden shield again. So, yeah, it's really it's really strategic that um the way that they handled the shields in this game, I really like it. And then this shield that you uh get last um, you know, it's an optional shield. Um, it's the weakest one, but it protects you from everything. And, um, finally we have the Hylian shield, which is also optional. Um, another game, another game mechanic that they introduced is they, uh, did potions, but you can also use the bugs that you find to, uh, make them stronger, which is really cool in my opinion. Um, kind of leads to you making Link really overpowered in some ways so yeah if there's one thing that people will um, complain about with games that were the Zelda Wii games it's the tutorials because holy shit these games their tutorials were so boring the Twilight Princess tutorial people say is like a school lesson for me it's not as bad as the one in this game because this game it holds your hand throughout the entire thing and I can see why because you know the motion controls thing but come on players they don't like having everything fed to them they want to figure it out themselves which is what Breath of the Wild is doing which is good so um, yeah I'm glad that they have this you have this annoying piece of shit um, that's Fee she is the spirit of the Master Sword, which leads to one of the saddest moments in any Zelda game, which you're not going to get in Breath of the Wild since um, there's no partner in that game, which is a good thing and a bad thing in my opinion. You know, it's a good thing because you won't have an annoying ass voice throughout the entire game um, telling you where to go or anything, but it's a bad thing because like you don't have any emotional connection to it. It's just you on your own, which is, you know, it's a good thing for what they're going for with that game. And then what else? Um, Link can sleep in other people's beds in this game. It's crazy, but yes, he can do it. It's really creepy. And basically, what it does is it's a way to change from day to night. So I'm going to show that off. I'm going to sleep in somebody's bed. And it's just a little, like, transition cutscene. That's it. I was wondering what that was. Like, what the fuck? I almost don't want to say anything, so I'm just going to sleep again until morning. No, I meant to say uh, sleep until morning. There we go. 
and then I'm going to uh, give my reasons why this is my favorite of the series and then that's probably gonna be the end of the video so reasons why this is my favorite other than like the art style and the music and all that it just feels so grand um for me this is probably one of the biggest Zelda games before Breath of the Wild of course but um now this is like it feels like a grand adventure flying through the sky oh yeah I forgot to talk about flying so in this game you don't have a horse to ride you fly so that's pretty cool but like Wind Waker it does get very very boring but um pretty much you have all these little islands to explore it's really cool to uh, see all this stuff um, there's only like a few of them that really matter though which kind of sucks like some have mini games fuck that mini game by the way and um, and fuck that one too <laughs> I hate all the mini games in this game I mean I don't hate all of them but still and then um, you have three different uh, places to go and those are like your main objectives throughout um, the story of the game um, one thing that I didn't like about the game is that you go to the same three places three times and you don't really find any like new areas um, I mean you do find a new area because like a new area is opened up because of um, what you have um, like what items you have and stuff but um, you know um, the thing that like the thing that makes it annoying for me has to be the um, the fact that it's still a part of the same area. You don't like discover a new area. Like what I mean by that is like it's still a part of the woods, or it's still a part of the volcano, or it's still a part of the desert. And um, you know, all that changes is the visuals. Like, you don't discover some new place. Like, in Twilight Princess, for example, um, when you revisited the, um, when you revisited the, um, the, um, I'm trying to think about it because it's been a while since i played through the whole game. I've, all, I've only played through the HD version one time. But, um, you know, whenever you go to the, um, the place where the Zoras are, Zoras Domain, um, you can find the ice part of the place, the snow peak ruins, the, um, you know, the snow part of the place. And, um, the reason why I prefer that is because you're at least finding something new. Like, it's a whole new environment to explore. So, yeah. Also, remember how with Wind Waker I said that all it is is blue with a bunch of lines? Welcome to white with a bunch of lines. So yeah, not to mention, all of this is um, motion control. But like, I love this because like, you know, flying, it feels so much more exhilarating than riding a horse in some ways. Like it's so much more fun to um just experience this because it feels so bigger so much bigger it feels bigger but then the problem is that it's so empty so yeah just like with wind waker but um you know the thing is with the um with the loft wing that's what this thing is called um, I at least feel like I'm doing something more than I do with Wind Waker. Because in Wind Waker, in uh, Wind Waker, you don't really have to touch any anything just like at all on the controller. You can just, um, you know, just hold in that same direction and you're going to go in that same direction. And it looks like I'm coming up on time again, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let the video stop for right now. And I'm going to see you guys in just a second. Alright, so back on topic of uh, reasons why I love this game the most out of all of them. 
um, out of all the Zelda games that I've played, um, this one has the best story in my opinion. Like, it has a really, it has a really big story, and, um, for the first time you actually cared about Zelda, you know, because that's something that they've always kind of, um, haven't done very well. She's always kind of been a damsel in distress like Peach, but, you know, she actually did help out, at least. So I'll give her that. If there's one other thing that I can say is kind of an issue with this game, it's the lack of fast travel. Every other Zelda game has a fast travel method of sorts, ever since the first one. Like, for example, um, literally, ever since the first one, they thought of a fast travel method for, uh, you know, getting around quicker. Which is nice, but then, uh, this game, it doesn't have one, really. Which kind of sucks. Honestly, I really wish they hadn't done that. But, um, you know, it just feels like a grander scale than most of the other Zelda games. Even Breath of the Wild in my eyes, because I feel like that game, it's just, um, it's going for a more of a, uh, you know more is more effect in some ways in my honest opinion but that's just me and you know that's not a bad thing to do because you know you want to have a good first impression if somebody hasn't really played an open world game I haven't played many open world games um, you know and um, for somebody who hasn't played a Zelda game and has heard there are like these big scale adventures from other people, then you want to have your most recent title to be a big scale adventure. So yeah, that's just a problem that this game's had. You know, linearity. That's a problem that every 3D Zelda game's had. That um, they're basically point A to point B type deals. But anyways, um, I don't really have anything else to say about this game. I'm trying not to make this one as long as the Twilight Princess video. But um, this one's always been my favorite because the story is epic, the cutscenes are great. Um, I love a lot of the characters, even though some of the designs are really weird. Like um, this kid right here. This kid right here is Nightmare Fuel. Turn around. Like, ju just look at him. I'll let that haunt your nightmares. But anyways, um, next time's gonna be the finale. And then after that, we have Breath of the Wild. First 30 minutes, day one gameplay. Um, I hope y'all look forward to that. And I'll see y'all next time.